I'm not trying to brag, but I have big files. And I'd love to get them into my Cloudflare object storage, R2. Now, I don't know if you've tried to build an application that handles file uploads yet, but you might have found that you can only post about 100 megabit sized files through a worker. And frankly, that's not enough space if you want to deal with larger files like video. And that's exactly why multi-part upload exists. It allows you to upload chunks of a file one at a time. It's a very friendly API, but here's the challenging thing. You need to maintain the state of the upload. You know to, need to know how many chunks have already been uploaded, how many are left. So in the docs, it suggests that I use a durable object to maintain state. And I think that this is a great idea since durable objects are perfect for that. I just need a temporary execution container, right? And in case you missed it, there's a new uh, syntactically sugarful approach to durable objects that we're calling actors uh, that I thought I'd take for a spin and show you how you can use it too. So this is the app, I'm calling it Large Marge. And if you don't understand that reference, I'm excited for the big adventure that this might lead you on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a file here. I've got this new uh, podcast here. I'm gonna upload it and you'll see that it uploads just like you might think it would. And it uploads in chunks and I kept track of that. You probably don't need to do that. But one thing that you might not be thinking about it is if you were uploading this file so that it, it uploaded like you'd think, if you were uploading a new file, right? So let's let's go ahead and say that we're uploading a file and we'll do that same file again. You might get disconnected, right? If this has taken a long time, your user might come and say, I don't know, disconnect like that. So we'll come and uh, look again. Now what's happened is I've made it so that it keeps state. It remembers that uh, you were in the middle of it. They says that there's 68 parts remaining. You probably don't need to tell them that much, uh, but you could continue to upload uh, where you're at. Now, you might not have thought about this before, uh, but there's a security feature in browsers that makes sure that the user actually chooses the file. Otherwise you could gain malicious access to their file system. So uh, we prompt them to choose that file. So I'll go choose that file again. I will choose that file, uh, which is this one here, This this podcast and we will go ahead and uh, resume the upload and there we go. So pretty cool, right? Let's peep the code. So I have a worker and it's using the web framework Hono. Now, if you haven't seen Hono yet, it's super nice. Uh, it has a very powerful middleware and actually I'm using one here called Hono Sessions that just loaded. So Hono Sessions. Uh, so I do this app use, use session and uh, by default, it just uses cookies, right? So, uh, but you could set it up to use a key value store if you wanted to. Uh, so you'll see that I'm doing a post to API uploads and, uh, here, this is, this is my actor. This is the, the, uh, abstraction here. I'm getting a hold of the actor, uh, getting a brand new ID, just giving some random ID, getting a hold of the stub. And you'll see what's nice is the stub has the ability to call these methods. And we'll take a look at those methods here in a second. Uh, and I'm just looping through here. I'm setting, uh, the data, setting the, the session data so that the local, browser has access to that in the cookies. Uh, and I am having, what, what I'm having happen is say, each time I want to know uh, what how many parts it should get. That's why it knows how many to do at a time. And I'm abstracted away everything else into the after. Uh, and then I can go ahead and get the upload and we can uh, do what we do here is we have the client side API send chunks using the patch method. We push those, those bits of the data together. Um, so uh, let's go ahead real quick and take a look at the uploader. So let's take a look at that actor code. Uh, I really dig this implementation. So the way it works is you define a class. Uh, so you define this class, right? So we've got this uploader class, it extends actor. And uh, what we do is we create that instance, right? When we did that dot get, it creates an instance and it's identified by the name that I gave it, right? So it was a, uh, I gave it that, that uh, crypto hash ID, right? So when I first did this uploader.get, I used that, either used the ID that was passed in to get the existing one, or I created a brand new one with this uploader ID string, and it's this random uh, UUID. So uh, it's gonna be identifiable by that. The instance is that. So each one of these instances has a, a SQLite database. It's really powerful and it's super fast because it's local, right? It's not leaving the instance and it's a little mind bendy. So stick with me. The instance is still serverless. It'll go to sleep. It's not always on. And when the request comes back to it, it restores its state. So you can store the state fairly easily in the DB, or you can also store it here in these properties that are decorated with the persist keyword. So persist will mean when this comes around, the next time, every time it, it comes back to life, this on init gets called. 
And on a knit has in here, we have this this.storage.migrations. I set those. Uh, I set what the table is that I want to do. And that way I can modify this as it happens, right? So I can change the tables that are here. I'm just storing, in this case, I'm storing the parts uh, that we want to have come through. And then I can call run migrations and it will go and it will run all of those. So the tables will be all set there. And then also you'll notice that I can get access to that instance here. So this this multi-part upload, I can get access to the uh, those properties that we set that we wanted to persist. And you'll see that I have these methods and these methods, so this method's called setup and it takes these original file name and file size. And if we go to the index and we go to the file name and file size and we, we find it here where, where I call setup, you'll see that I have access to the stub, right? I got the stub and I called it just using RPC automatically out of the box. It's typed, it knows what's supposed to go in there. Pretty cool, right? So that leads, lets you keep all of your abstraction in the uploader file, right? So all of the things that are in here, all of that magic, I'm keeping contained in this actor and it feels good, right? It feels really good. And of course, you know, I can go ahead and I can do a, a NPM run deploy and it deploys uh, to region earth, Cloudflare's global network. And while the worker will launch from anywhere, remember my actor instance is singular. So it'll be created as close to the requester as where it's coming from. But that's it. Pattern's super powerful. Uh, Actors is currently in beta. We'd love to know uh, what you think. And especially if you've used durable objects before or tried to use it, how does this new actor pattern feel? What are you planning on building with Actors? I'm planning on building a container app that uses FFmpeg to trim videos into smaller chunks so I can try to place them on a map. Uh, if you end up building a front end that uploads files, tell them Large March sent you. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you real soon.